Hey everyone, welcome back to The Breakfast Club. I'm your host, Sword Sage. I'm late, I know, work, stuff, but I was at least able to get this one out because I wanted to make sure to get this one out since, well, this is in response to the responses to my last week's video and it would be, you know, it would be wrong of me, it would, you know, be a bit irresponsible of me if I didn't bother to put a response, you know you know, kind of close the loop as it were. So, I know that the question I asked was a <laughs> difficult one, um, but I chose it specifically because I knew it would be a difficult question and I feel that it is one that we should, those of us who are serious about pondering these sorts of problems in the human condition, and these particular philosophical and ideological problems that we have, I really think this is something worth examining, which is ironic when you consider the question itself is about whether certain things deserve to be re-examined over and over again, particularly certain positions and ideologies and beliefs. Now, everyone who responded to this gave some really interesting positions. It seems that everyone more or less agrees that, yes, ideas should continue to be re-examined, that there is, you know, we really should just not be complacent with things, with, you know, a certain position, because who knows, new information can come around that could, you know, prove the old position wrong, or at least, you know, puts the position in a new light. Though there seems to be at least... Uh, there seems to be a little bit of disagreement on how far we should take it with certain topics or certain things. And the overall th um, view seems to be until we can get everybody on the same page, we may have to keep redoing these discussions. But it's just that some things might be a little bit more comfortable with like, well, maybe it is a good thing. Maybe it is, you know. I think that's where the line seems to, you know, th that's where the line seems to be blurred. That's where the uncomfortable feelings begin, where when you are dealing with a topic that most, if not all people are agreeing that, at least reasonable people, and of course then you got into the argument of what's reasonable, you know, most, just for the sake of argument, say that most people are like, okay, no, that ain't cool. Like, we all generally agree, no, this thing is not cool. And then you'll have somebody going, well, maybe cool it's like, oh come on dude it, do we really need to have a discussion about this it's, you know that's you know this is where you know things start to get murky and whether or not we should have that particular discussion now i again i like some of the interesting things that were brought up uh, one thing that um, I like that Agent of Doubt had brought up is how he felt that people seem to have to relearn lessons over and over again. That that seems to be a major part of the human condition. A part of me would like to argue that, well, the reason why we have to keep relearning these lessons is because people freaking just tend to be ignorant and stupid and just idiotically forget things that they shouldn't forget. And especially since, you know, in this day and age, we have like near instant access to information in history where you can read about those lessons and see what happens when you don't follow those, you know, when you do repeat these mistakes and you go, oh yeah, that's not a good idea, I shouldn't do that, you know, but <laughs> as much as I would like to argue that, it, 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 people just, I don't know what it is, they just seem to like, you know, freaking touching that third rail over and over again they just gotta feel the buzz i don't know why but it, it, even when they know that they shouldn't it, it, it reminds me of a very old video game uh, yeah some of you guys make video games you're bringing video games into this really it's supposed to be a serious topic but no no there's there is value in this and in, in all forms of human art and media and literature whatever form we put it in there's always a little bit of truth that you can take from it, no matter how absurd or silly it may seem. And this is sort of reminded me of a game that I played way, 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 way back, a long time ago, um, called The Mark of Cree. It was a PlayStation 2 game. And in the beginning intro, there was an interesting line that has always stuck with me. It amused me, but it always stuck with me. Basically, the game is basically about these six marks of evil power that have to be hidden away 
um, because if they were ever brought together, they would bring, you know, untold destruction upon the, the earth. Like evil spirits would come out of some dimension and enslave all of mankind and kill them all. Um, and there's this line that I love. It goes, but men, like, it was like, you know, these six things were kept away from humanity and everyone was told, don't F with these marks. And then the narrator goes, but men are mortal and time can be the enemy of fear. All too soon we forget that the bee will sting and the fire will burn. <laughs> I remember the first time I heard that, I started laughing because it was sort of a truism, isn't it? Though I personally, in regards to what's going on now, would take away the word fear and just simply put in the word memory. So time can be the enemy of memory. People do forget these things. And then they have to relearn the lessons over again. Though I'm also finding that it isn't necessarily that people forget. It's more that they don't have access to certain things or they don't seem to understand the impact of certain things or the significance of things that happened in the past. And so they're going to have to experience it for themselves. And then they're like, ah, now I get it. And I'm thinking that also has to do with the way we tend to learn. Like you can read things in the book as much as you want or you can watch things in a video and think you got it here. But until you actually experience it, or do it, or it finds some way for you to be tactically real. You know, like until that actually happens, it doesn't really feel real. Like you don't really get it. Yet. Like, okay, like riding a bike. No one can really explain to you how to ride a bike. Like they can talk to you about the physics of it. You, know, you just you gotta balance yourself a certain way. You don't lean too far left or, or too far right or whatever. But once you're sitting in that seat, there's that moment when it clicks and the, ah, I get it. Maybe that's an extreme example, but it, it just seems to be with people, they just, I guess they have to learn the hard way. You, we kind of wish that we didn't, but it seems that we sort of do. But having said all that, I do think that ultimately it does come down to access to certain bits of information. And I'm seeing that a lot of disagreements that we have whether it's ideological or philosophical or whatever, tends to be because one group doesn't necessarily have the information that another group has. And what's more, whether that information is, you know, well, truthful or not, or updated or not. I find sometimes when I'm conversing with people that they will feel very strongly about something that they have a lot of outdated information for. And that, you know, when I'm trying to explain, no, it's actually this. They don't seem to understand. No, wait, the, no, it's, it's, it's clearly this, you know, especially when the thing that there's they feel so strongly about, you know, seems to be supported by their life experiences. And when you take into consideration the fact that the way we perceive the world is not to make this already long video get even longer. The way we perceive the world ultimately is perceived through illusion. Our mind basically creates a certain reality for us. It's not exactly the reality that's out there. Our eyes see in limited colors and you know, you know what I'm getting at, right? There's a limited spectrum that we perceive the world in. And because of that, our you know perceptions of what's happening around us could be flawed. This is why we came up with things like science in order to be able to circumvent the limitations we have to gather the real truth of what's around us and how things work and why things are the way they are. But we every now and then will follow certain ideologies that really seem to fit true to our personal understanding of the world, our own personal experience. And because of that, then when you come up with somebody saying, no, that's actually not the way it is, when it runs contrary to your particular form of common sense, it's like, no, that's not, no, no, it's this, it's this, it's this, this. Um, for instance, gender identity politics was brought up in one of the video responses, um, which I think is a really good apt um, thing to bring up here because a lot of people just don't get the whole thing of who cares how you feel if you feel you're this. When you're clearly not, I mean, look at you. This is what you are, right? I mean, and that's according to basic human perception. You say you're this, but you look like this. What? And you were born this, so what the hell? 
But yet science is showing that, no, there is something to what they're feeling. It's more than just, oh, I feel this way. No, that's the way their brains are wired. That's the way their, genetic, their genetics happen to form up. When you look at the way their brains are mapped, no, this is, inside, they are something different than what we're seeing. <laughs> That's why they feel the way they do. There is actual scientific evidence that has been gathered, that's been building over the, the years, showing that, no, there is something to this. This is new information that the majority of the public is not particularly aware of. And so the debates persist. So what does this have to do with certain ideologies having to bring it up over and over again? Well, when we're bringing up certain controversial things like say the fact that there are now nazis walking in the u.s despite the fact that we thought that this whole thing would we never have to deal with it again well to be honest some of people actually looked at what was happening in the past and like oh i like that shit. ask any you know alternate rock group in the 80s when they had to deal with these guys showing up at their concerts these people have been around for a long time but then there's other people who they don't fully understand the impact of what these particular ideologies lead to, what's actually being stated, what's being said. And they may not necessarily agree with certain new information about what truly constitutes being a human being or what the human experience is. And therefore, the information they have is different than what somebody else may have. And so they are going to have to rehash this debate over and over again because, no, I, this is the way things are. No, we've already gone through this. What do you mean we've gone through this? You mean your, you know, your biased groups. Here we go again. And this usually comes about through, again, lack of information and information being delivered in different ways to different people at different, you know, at different rates and at different times. Not everybody's being brought up on the same page. And I think and because of that, as well as other factors I've brought up and other things that I'm pretty sure anybody else can be able to bring into this discussion. This is why these things are having to happen over and over again. So yeah, this is, I, I know I brought up a very difficult question and it's not one with a very definitive answer. What I will say is that ultimately I do believe that everything deserves to be re-examined. Remember, the re-examined life is not a life. It's not a life worth living. You have to be able to challenge your values every now and then, especially when you encounter new information. And I think that's the key thing here. Once you encounter new information that seems legit, that may run contrary to what you previously held, it's time to re-examine it and readjust it. It's time to upgrade. That's really the point of re-examination. Hmm, we just discovered this new thing. How does it fit with what we've known before when you're rehashing old stuff that you've already gone through and there is no new information that means there's something missing that means you know education has not been complete that means there was a problem in the deliverance of information to the groups that now have to re-examine it or worse you know they had forgotten it and need to be retaught that's usually what's happening and that re-education better freaking happen or consequences can occur. You know, as JJ Talks brought up, once you start bringing human lives into the mix, we really need to seriously start wondering how important it is to have to rehash certain old lessons. Because now, now we're dealing with human lives. Now we're dealing with, you know, things that can affect people in rather harsh ways and can have a profound influence on how things happen afterwards we're still feeling results of what happened in the past many different past events to this day because certain lessons weren't learned so we have to be careful with that so i say that yes ultimately things i don't think there really is like a cutoff point until once everyone's on the same page and yeah the cutoff is there until we encounter some new information that causes us to have to go back and relook at it again and see if we need to update. But there also have to be, I personally think there should be some caveats when human lives are at stake. One last thing, and I know this has gone for long enough, I was trying to, I was hoping to keep this under 10 minutes, but I had forgotten to say this. If whatever position you're re-examining is running contrary to something that people have already pretty much 
like it's been a long time and this view has been challenged and challenged over and over again and we new information old information all lines up then yeah that's definitely when it's like okay you obviously don't know what the hell you're talking about you need to go back and <laughs> relearn this we're not having a new discussion you need to be educated and why I bring this up is because the one thing that human beings, no matter what your culture is or ideology or whatever is, is that, well, life is worth living and human life, you know, should not be devalued. If you're coming up with an ideology or a certain position that basically says, that, oh, human beings, we can do whatever the hell we want. Or this life should is we should be able to belittle it. When we already have cultures all over basically, you know, supposedly exalting human life, then there's a problem. And I know we can come up with examples of certain cultures like, oh, these humans are good, but these humans are bad. But we tend to condemn those for a reason. And as we get more and more global, more and more people are waking up to that fact that, yeah, we shouldn't be taking this group and putting it over here and other groups are putting it over here. And I'm thinking that's ultimately where I think the battle is really going to begin. When you start dealing with ideologies that people are saying, oh, well, this one has value, but yet it's bringing down a certain group of people in order to elevate another group. That's where, that's where I think the discussions are really going to get heated, and rightly so. And it's going to be a long time before we're able to remedy that one. So, yeah, I know it was a difficult question, and I know I didn't exactly come up with a definitive answer, but that's human life for you. Anyway, I hope this got you guys, you know, to think about some stuff and at least, you know, you gave some food for thought. And I hope it continues to bring food for thought. So that's that. Hope to see you next week. Catch you guys later.